test done? Let's see if this rocket works. Yeah, come on. Oh, okay, clear. Uh, one moment. Now, uh, where were we? Uh, can you just remind me what we needed to do to finish off the rocket? First, you need some sort of propellant to fuel the rocket. Okay. For example, NASA uses liquid hydrogen. And then second, you need an ignition to launch the rocket. Okay, good. That seems fair enough. Uh, I've got, uh, oh, I've got my gantry here. So that's good. I've got my rocket balloon. And I've got some hydrogen and oxygen. I think that's about all I need. Uh, Claire. Could you go through uh, the health and safety procedures with our guests, please? Tēnā koutou katoa. No mai haramai. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Meridian Energy, the University of Auckland Faculty of Engineering and the McDiamond Institute are proud to present Nano Girl Live and Out of This World. Now, before we start, there are a few things you need to know to keep you safe. Activating health and safety mode. Alrighty, everybody. Whakarongo mai, titiro mai. Nano girl, Boris and I, will be up here attempting some pretty dangerous experiments. And they would be pretty dangerous if you tried them at home. So, I mean, to be honest, they're pretty dangerous when we try them up here too. <laughs> so please, do not attempt any of the experiments you see today unless, of course, you are a real scientist or a real-life scientist is supervising you. Now, please obey any requests you hear from our ushers or the team here on stage. And please, do not approach the stage at any time during the show unless, of course, we invite you. We just want you to stay safe. Now's a good time to have a quick check about where your nearest exit might be. Oh, yours might be behind you. And now is a good time too to have a quick check under your seat and see if your hard hat's there, your safety goggles, your earplugs, all the things you might need. And please remember, if an oxygen mask falls in front of your face, please be sure to... Oh no, that's the aeroplane, isn't it? Okay, I think that's all you need to know to stay safe. Now please remember, you can record any of the show that you're about to see, but please make sure your phone is on silent. Science is for everyone, so please feel free to share some of the most amazing science and engineering feats ever seen. Enjoy the show. Perfect, right. Okay, great. We are all health and safety briefed up. We have a rocket filled with oxygen and hydrogen. We have a lighter. We have gloves. Right, we are ready to go. What's a bit near? Uh, uh, oh, I think I've got... Oh, let's find a better plan. Oh, let's see. All oh, this will do. Right. Let's use that. Okay, fingers and ears, everyone. It might be a bit loud. Rocket launches are normally quite noisy. I think we're good. Let's see. Are we ready? In three, two, one. Whoa! Wow! What? What was that? Did you hear that? Yes, I did. What was the noise? It was my rocket going straight up there into space. Wow! It was you... so quick, I didn't even see it. I blinked, I missed it. Woo! You launched a rocket? So fast, it's probably the Saturn by now at least. What, what did it look like? Well, it was sort of long and green and thrusty. Did it? 
Did it look like this? It, well, it was a little bit bigger when I last saw it. Did it have a bit of this? And that bit there. Ah. Uh, I, I don't think you launched anything. I think you just, well, exploded it. What, what are you doing anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked because I've been building a rocket ship. What? Yes, indeed. A whole rocket ship? Yep. Mm, why? Well, I'm thinking about having a slight change of career. Okay. And I think maybe my skills like to lead me to be a spaceman or an astronaut. I mean, it, it, it's good to have career goals yep. and it's good to think big. Yes. Um, and being an astronaut is amazing, but you might need to th think about the training involved. And, and building a rocket ship is awesome, becoming an engineer, building cool stuff is cool. However, just a question. Yep. How much do you know about rocket ships? Uh, tiny bit. Okay, how much do you know about the physics of how things fly? Maybe less. Okay, I just I feel like we might need some training before you actually launch yourself and a rocket into space. So let, let's start with the basics of how things fly. Okay. Um, name me something technical that flies. A fly. A fly flies. Yes. Something a bit more technical than a fly. Uh, does anyone know anything more technical than a fly that flies? Birds. Birds fly, yes, a little bit bigger. Bigger than birds. Kites. Kites fly, something a bit more man-made and maybe metal or carbon fibre. I think they said planes. Planes, oh, okay, good. Planes. Planes, aeroplanes are great. Okay, how much do you know about how a fixed-wing aeroplane flies? Probably as much as I know about a rocket ship. So not very much. Not a lot. That's okay. I think I could teach you. In fact, do you know what? I've got a better idea. So you may remember last year we created an artificial intelligence system. Her name was Claire, which stands for Constantly Learning Artificial Intelligence Repository. Yes. Well, I've upgraded her because apparently robots are going to take our job. So I thought what I'd do is train Claire as an artificial intelligence system to train humans. Oh. And so I've been working on her NLP, her Natural Language Processing System. And so I think she should teach you about planes. Okay. Why don't you ask Claire to train you? Claire, would you please tell me about planes? Sure thing. Thank you. Searching. Oh, uh, here we go. Okay. Planes. Yep. A plane is a flat piece of land uh, with few trees, also known as a Prairie or a savanna? No, 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 Claire, you're wrong. Uh, incorrect spelling. P L A N E. Oh. Plane. Thank you, you must mean this type of plane. Absolutely. This is a tool consisting of a block with a projecting <laughs> blade used to shave and smooth out pieces of wood. Claire, I'm talking about an aeroplane. An aeroplane. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. A plane is a powered vehicle that flies, generating lift as it moves through the air using Bernoulli's principle. What? How did she do? Uh, uh, is artificial intelligence going to be the future? Did you learn about how planes fly? I think so. What did you learn? A plane is a mechanically propelled vehicle that moves through the air, generating lift using Bernoulli's poo poos. Using what? Banulu's poopers. Are you sure? Yes, it was Banulu's poopers, wasn't it? It wasn't Banulu's poopers. It was, I'm pretty sure she would have said Banulu's principle. That might have been it. Okay, Bernoulli's <laughs> principle is really simple. Named after Mr. Bernoulli, Daniel Bernoulli, he stated that faster flowing air creates lower pressure. So that's it. That's how planes fly. Fast moving air, low pressure, ta-da, takes off. Uh, now, I obviously understand that, but there looks a few people out there who haven't quite got the idea of Bernoulli's principle 
because I understand it, uh -huh. but I maybe there's more information we could give to help those people who don't understand it, uh -huh. the chance to understand it. How about we get some people to help you understand it? Okay, of course hold on, I put your hands do. up if you want to help explain Bernoulli's stuff. principle. Hands up if you want right. to help. Who would like to help? Up. Yeah. We're looking for a helper. <gasps> Star Wars, come to me. I say yes, you there, come on. Come and stand right Marvelous. here, we're just gonna wait for another helper. What's your name? Liam, come on, Liam. We've got Liam, we're coming. Okay, what is your name? Carlos. Carlos and Liam. Liam, come on up. I like your shirt, that's gonna be very relevant soon. Turn to the front and both of you take a bow and everyone's gonna go woohoo! Woo okay, Carlos and Liam, hold on to this for me. Liam, hold on to this for me. This is a very large, not a single-use plastic bag. Now, I have a question for you. We have tied one end and the other end is open. Do you think it is possible to blow up this whole bag in just one breath? No. He says yes. Do you what say do you yes think, or Liam? no, Liam? One breath, the whole bag? Yes, he says yes. He says yes. Do you yes. say yes? Some say yes, some say no. So we are going to, do you know what? I'm going to give you a bit of a, an advantage. I'm going to give you five big breaths, and I'm going to see if you can blow up this whole bag in five breaths. Do you think they can do it? Yeah! They can do it? Okay, here we go. Let's so take this. your biggest breath. Are you ready? Here we go. We're going to count the breaths as you blow them. Okay, blow there. breath one. Breath two, breath three, breath four, breath five. Okay, oh, Trevor, 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 Trevor. See how much hair you there, put in there. Stay there. Ooh, we have a lot. So we actually oh. have a lot. Ooh, we got, we got more we than got you just saying. Well. Oh, but you are bigger. So this is probably about five times your capacity of your lungs, which is good because they're about this half big size. and that big. And yeah, you're about half the size. So it's about. So do you think it's impossible to blow this up in, in one breath? Do you think you could have blown it up in one breath? No, you probably need another, what, five, 10, maybe 15 breaths to blow the whole bag up? Yep, and maybe 20 breaths 20 here? 20 maybe, yep. Okay, so I have a question. We're just gonna hold on to these. Go, though, Liam. I'm gonna bring out a bag of my own. Same sort of bag, just a different color, because I like colors. Now, it's empty on the inside, and you can see it's got a knot at the end. I'm gonna have you hold on to that, Boris. Now, if I could have you two put your hands out flat like this and stand here and act as a table for this bag. Okay, so I'm gonna try and blow it up in just one breath. But I'm gonna use Bernoulli's principle because it states that faster flowing air equals lower pressure. So I'm gonna stand far away from the bag when I blow into the bag. Hopefully that's gonna create low pressure inside the bag and the atmosphere is gonna freak out and try and equalize that low pressure. Which means that the atmosphere is actually gonna push air into the bag for me, which is more probably than my lungs can take and hopefully, what we'll see, I'm gonna try and blow it up in one go. Do you think I can do it? You think I can do it? No. No? No. Okay, we'll give it a go. I need to be counted in. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Whoa. So I'm um, slightly larger than my lungs. You can see you can actually blow up a plastic bag in just one breath using Bernoulli's principle. So what you need to do is stand further away from the bag if you try and do this at home. Remember, have an adult supervise you if you're around a bag. And you can actually use Bernoulli's principle to equalize the pressure and blow up a whole large bag in just one breath. Give them a round of applause, Carlos and Liam. Well done, Liam. Come back this way. We'll go back to your seat now. Awesome. And so this is an easy one to do at home, but I have another experiment that shows Bernoulli's yes. principle. Yes. Um, now, for this, I'm going to need a volunteer. Okay. And, and remember, we asked the mums and dads to nominate somebody. You were pulling your name out of a I hat. I did. I pulled the name out of the hat. And the name out of the hat is Imogen Magnusson in C35. Where are you? Imogen, just say whoop Imogen. if you're here so we know you're here and you're making your way to the stage. Imogen, are you coming? She's yep, coming, she's okay. Right, right. She's while, while she's coming, here, here's what we're gonna need. We're gonna need a hairdryer. Okay. 
Because a hairdryer has fast flowing air, and we're talking about fast flowing air and lower pressure, so it's going to create a low pressure airstream. Hold on to that. I've got that. Next, we're going to need a, a ping pong ball. Okay. So a ping pong ball is really tiny, and what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and float the ping pong ball into the low pressure stream. Okay. Now, if this works well, we'll be able to move around with our hair dryer and actually. You're right. Oh, she's looking for Imogen. Oh, sure, she's whilst, coming. Whilst, whilst turning I think like she this. may be coming. From, she may be up there. She is. She's on her way down. She's on her way down. Right, there's lots of stairs up there, so don't worry. Um, and so we're going to have her there hold on to this. Hello. Hi, Imogen. It's a long way from all the way up there. Thank you very much, sir. Give her a round of Here applause. We go. Come on over. Come on, come on over. Come on Welcome. over, Imogen. Okay, have you seen a hairdryer before? Good. Have you used one before? Fantastic. Perfectly trained engineer. Okay, hold on to it like this. Hold it up. All right. So we're going to point it straight up. And we're going to get you to try and balance this on the stream of air. Ooh. Now, if you walk very slowly, you should be able to balance it around and move around. And what you're doing is you're holding the ball up because it's trapped in low pressure. And because the air is moving slow on the outside, that's actually higher pressure and it's pushing the ball back in so it stays in this stream. Okay, don't worry, I got it. Don't panic, we'll turn that off. Now the thing is, can you see all the way up there, there's a whole bunch of people. Wave to them. Hi, everyone. Now the challenge is this is a really tiny ball and they are very far away. So Imogen, do you mind if we do this again, but slightly bigger? I have a bigger ping pong ball for you. Hold on to that. Um, and we have a slightly larger hair dryer. So <laughs> we're, we're going to do the same thing. The thing is, with Bernoulli's principle, when we're talking about air, it's invisible and it's very hard to see these things. So we're going to put a little bit of smoke in the air so that you can see the area of low pressure. And then we're going to try and take this ball and we're going to try and balance it over your head. Okay? So when the hair dry goes on, or the leaf blower, you're going to put the ball into the stream of air, let it go, and then stand with me and we'll see if we can balance on your head. Ready? Okay. All right. Hair dryer on. Hair dryer on. Balance the ball. And then take a step back. Do you know what I think? I think we can go a little bit higher. Can we go higher? Faster flowing air equals low, lower pressure. This is Bernoulli's principle. <laughs> Imogen, take a bow. Thank you so much for. Now, can you find your way back? She's got a long way to go. And could you guys see this one up there? Ah, awesome. That was brilliant. Right. How cool uh, is that? What else can I balance? Things broken. Oh, it's all falling apart. My toilet roll's blowing off. What are you, oh. what are you doing? You just broke the whole it's thing. It's broken. Oh, right. Well, what are. were you doing anyway? Well, I was trying to bounce the toilet roll on the thing and it broke. It all broke. Give me the toilet roll. Put that down. Dear me. <laughs> toilet roll? Here, look. I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's take this toilet roll. We're going to take a sheet off this toilet roll. I want you to hold it very carefully because okay. we're going to do an experiment with it. Now, what I want you to do... What? Hold on to it very carefully. Please don't snot on it or sneeze on it or sweat on it. Or Okay. Okay, what we're going to do... Boris. Yes. Pay attention. Sorry. I want you to hold it in your fingertips like this. Okay. We are going to, in a second, don't do it yet, blow over the top of the toilet roll. Yes. I want you to hypothesize. <laughs> hypothesize. <laughs> what does mean? 
So a hypothesis is how scientists guess what's going to happen next. Oh, so I'll take a guess what's going to happen next. A hypothesis. I, I can, oh, thank you. So uh, we're going to go take a guess, a hypothesis okay. of what's going to happen next. So we're going to blow over the top of the toilet tissue. And do you think it's going to go up or down? Down. Why? Well, when I blow, it's going to blow down. Down. Final answer. Down. Do you think it's going to go up or down? Wrong. That's their hypothesis. Okay, keep your hypothesis. We're going to run an experiment and see what happens. So okay. hold on to it and blow over the top and... It's come up. So... You should see that when you blow over the top of it, it actually moves up, not That's down. They were right. And, and this is how aeroplanes fly. So an aeroplane wing is an aerofoil, meaning it has a different shape so that the air goes really quickly over the top. And we know that fast flowing air equals lower pressure. That means the air underneath is going slower, creating higher pressure. And that higher pressure pushes it up, the plane up or the toilet roll up. And so that's how planes get lift. That's how they fly. Bernoulli's principle. So when we're building a rocket ship, you need to understand Bernoulli's principle. Okay. Okay. Right. It's really important. So just stand over there, practice Bernoulli's principle with the toilet roll, and I'll, I just want to show you the same experiment, just slightly bigger for the okay. people at the I'll back. Okay. I'll practice first, and then uh, okay. you can show me the better, bigger experiment. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I've got a spare bit. Okay, so what have you learned so far about Bernoulli's principle? To toilet paper doesn't taste very nice. And that uh, Bernoulli's principle says that faster moving air creates lower pressure, and then the high pressure rushes to fill that gap to equalize it. Great, just like this. <laughs> I feel like I've been in an explosion in the toilet. Oh, oh well, it's too much of it. Oh, oh. It's all right, I've tidied it away. I've tidied it away. It's all tidy. I love this experiment. And you could totally do this at home, either just by blowing it with a piece of paper or toilet roll, or, I mean, if you have a leaf blower, you might want to do it the bigger way. It's up to you. But there you go. That's all Bernoulli's equation. How things fly. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, I have one... Well, I have a few questions, really. Mm -hmm. And one of them is, what is the difference mm -hmm. between space and Earth? Oh, well, there's lots. So... Gravity. Okay. Gravity is different in different places. So yep. on Earth, we know gravity pulls us. It's a force pulling us to the ground. That means... Just turn around a second. Okay. So on Earth, you weigh mm, 100 kilos. So... Wait. Don't suck your gut in. I know how much you weigh. But the good news is, if you went to Mars... Yes. You would only weigh 40 kilos. Oh, I might move there. So there's less... You weigh less on different places because, anyway, gravity pulls you down with different amounts. Um, let me think. Uh, astronauts say that space smells like steak. Ooh, interesting. I don't know if it's true, but that's what they say, so that's different because wow. it doesn't smell like steak here on Earth right nope. now. Um, what else? Um, it's cold in space. Okay. It's m over minus 240 degrees Celsius in space. Uh, I'd better go and get a coat. Nah, Boris. Yep. At uh, 240, minus 240, very cold. Going to need more than a coat. A coat and a jumper? Uh, 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 no, we'll worry about what you wear. Okay. Going to need more than a coat and a scarf and a hat and all those okay. things. But, but if you think about how gases change with temperature, oh, yes. that's going to be really important for you to think about. So when you blow up a balloon, and okay. I'll show you about gases and temperature. Blow up a balloon? <laughs> Can you blow it really big and then tie it for me? Okay, all done. 
ปุ๊บสอรี่โอเค never mind no we, it's okay it was quite a challenging task apparently don't worry I've got a balloon it's all right I found one there's one back there okay so here's a balloon that we blew up with our lungs and so we can see how much gas is in there because we can see how big the balloon is how big do you think that balloon is about the size of my head okay one Boris head unit now if we were to make this Balloon colder? Do you think it would get bigger or smaller? Uh, oh, I don't know. Okay. Bigger or smaller? We'll have a think about it. Now I need something very cold. So name me something very cold, Boris. Ice. Ice. Colder than ice. Dry ice. Colder than dry ice. Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen. I have some of that here. So liquid nitrogen boils at minus 196 degrees Celsius. That means it's very, very cold. And so, what do you think is going to happen to this balloon if we put liquid nitrogen onto the balloon, Boris? What is your it hypothesis? It will pop. It will pop. Is your hypothesis? Yes. What do you think it's going to do? Okay, hold on to that hypothesis. We're going to run an experiment and see what happens. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? I've got hold of the balloon. Oh. It's got a hole in it. It doesn't it's have a smaller. hole in it. Wow. So you should see that the balloon is getting smaller, and that's because gases, when they get colder, they can contract. That means the molecules get closer and closer together, so they take up less space, meaning that we've got exactly the same amount of gas in the balloon, but it's, it's taking up much less space, so the balloon looks smaller. So now we have a balloon that is, well, flat like a pancake. It is like a pancake. But what do you think will happen when we warm it back up, Boris? I don't know. Let's try it. Okay, we're going to take our balloon. See how flat it is. It's very cold. And we're going to warm it up by blowing on it. And that should warm up the gas. As the molecules warm up and they get more excited, they're going to start to stretch out and take up way more space. And you can see how much more space they're taking up because you'll see how big the balloon is. And well, this is a really easy way of showing you how, um, how gases change in their volume just by temperature. Super easy. And this is something you're going to have to worry about when you're in space, because if it's very, very cold, you're going to have to worry about different gases and then how things behave. And well, it's pretty fun, that. Why don't well, you give it to somebody out there? Back to the size of my face. Marvelous. Look at that, a real balloon. It's a cold balloon. Just be careful if you touch it. Oh, he's got oh, it. There we are. Now, does that make sense to you? So gases, when they increase in temperature, they take up more space. And when they decrease in temperature, they take up less space. It does make absolute sense. Now, I can't help notice we've got a little bit of liquid nitrogen left. We do. And it would seem a shame to waste it. Well, what would you like to do with it? Could we do a dangerous and noisy experiment? Oh, no, no, no. They wouldn't want to do that. Would you all like to see a dangerous and noisy experiment? I think they're quite keen. Let's do it. Okay, maybe a little one. Hold on, we'll get some stuff out. Okay, gonna have to protect the floor because it's very dangerous. And very messy. Now, we're gonna bring over a barrel that's got some things oh. in it. Inside the barrel, we have just a piece of top and we have a flask of hot water, a funnel, and an empty bottle. Ooh. Okay, Boris, take the hot water okay. and pour it into the barrel for me. Into no. the barrel it goes. Into I'm gonna the take barrel it goes. This empty bottle. Let me show you that it's empty. And we're gonna fill this up with the liquid nitrogen. So what you're gonna see is when the liquid nitrogen goes into it, it's gonna boil straight away because its boiling point is minus 196. So we'll pour that in. And as it boils, it's gonna go straight from a liquid to turning into a gas. 
Now, don't forget that gases take up way, way, way more space than liquids. You can go way more than that. Oh, there's some in the top. Right. Yeah, more. Keep going. That's good. Okay. Okay. So we can see that it's taking up more space because as it expands, it comes out of the top because there's not enough space in the bottle for it. So it's boiling up, it's turning into a gas, and you can see it coming out of the top. Now what we're going to do is put the lid on the bottle. Oh. Okay, are you ready? And then I'm going to cover it in the top, and I'm going to run away. So you might want to put your fingers on your ears. All right, okay, lid, lid on. On. In the hot water. Over here. I'm going to run over here. Right. So what's going to happen is the liquid nitrogen is going to expand as it turns from a liquid to a gas. Now that's going to put pressure on the inside of the bottle. And that's going to expand and expand and expand until... Whoa! Well, it can't expand anymore. So um, that... That is what happens when gases expand because they get warmer. And um, for those of you who are wondering how the bottle did, well, this was the bottle. Um, there's now many pieces of bottle. But anyway, that's what happens with gases in different temperatures. And um, that's one of my favorite experiments, actually. Whew. OK, so that's temperature done. That's gravity done. That's Bernoulli's principle done. Yep. When were you going to launch your rocket? Oh. I'm glad you asked that because I had a very long think about this and I thought, I, I thought about going during the day, but I was worried about steering a little bit too close to the sun and getting sunburned. So I thought I'd go at night, but not any night. I thought I'd go at a night when the moon is at its fullest and it's glowing super bright so I can guide myself by the light of the moon, now I can see stars, satellites, planets, aliens, anything that's in my way, because the moon is a very, very, very bright object, almost as bright as the sun. Hmm, Paris. Yes? You do know that the moon doesn't glow, right? And it does look, you can see it's glowing, some dark, black, and woo, and on a dark night, you can see for miles, because it's so bright. No, it, it doesn't glow, it, it reflects light from the sun, and we can see that reflection. Uh, no one? Phases of the moon? No. Moon is dark? No. Dark side of the moon? Music, no. Okay. I tell you what, grab the lab bench, put the fake sun on, and I will find somebody who can help put me explain the, the phases of the moon to you. Okay. Phases of the moon. Who knows about the moon and Jesus. all the different phases on the moon? Who knows? All right. I can barely see back here. It's very dark back here. Come on, do you want to come up? I found a helper. Hooray! Well done. What's your name? Abby. Okay, come on up, Abby. Oh, look, there's a piece of bottle here. I went far. Okay, everybody, we have Abby. Abby, turn around and take a bow. Everybody go, yay! Now, Abby, thank you for helping us. Um, we're going to, if that's okay, ask you to be the Earth for us. Can you be the Earth? Now, to be the Earth, you need to wear the Earth hat. So here is the Earth hat. That's so we all understand that you are the Earth. Now, we're going to talk about the Earth and the Sun, but also the Moon. So I'm going to need you to be in charge of the Moon. Thank you. This is the Moon. And I'm going to have you stand and face the Sun for me, please. Okay. And we are going to look at what happens when the Earth orbits the Sun and the Moon orbits the Earth and how we can see it differently. Okay, so we're going to see this from your perspective. Abby, this is your head. You are the Earth. This is the Earth hat. The Earth is looking at the Moon. And so right now, we can see that the Moon is very dark because the Sun is the opposite side. What are you doing? Floating in space. Ooh. Boris, look, there's lots of you. Ooh. Hello. Okay, pay attention, pay attention. Sorry. Right. 
We were talking about Abby being the Earth, remember? Yes. And so when the sun is on the opposite side of the Earth to the moon, well, the part of the moon that is lit is a part that we can't see. So the moon looks dark to us. We call this a new moon. However, if Abby takes a little turn in this direction, Ooh. stop right there, you'll be able to see that as the Earth and the moon change in where they're orbiting, we look like we have a little bit of the moon lit. We call this a crescent moon. And so as this keeps happening, I'm going to have you turn this way a little bit more. OK, stop right there. You can now see that the moon is, although it's half lit, we can only see a quarter of that. So we call this a quarter moon because of the position of the Earth and the sun. Now we're going to keep going around a little bit, right to there. Now when it's almost full, but not quite, this is called a gibbous moon. A gibbous moon. Ooh. And then we can go all the way around, stop right there, and oh. that is a bright, full moon. So when you're talking about going on the light of the moon, you're talking about this, but, but the moon is just reflecting the light to the Earth so we can see it differently. Right, okay. But actually, the moon is still dark. Makes sense. So if we go back through the phases, if you turn back slowly the way you came, so gibbous moon, quarter moon, crescent moon, and back to a new moon, you'll see that although the moon looks dark from the Earth, the, the moon is always dark if it's on the other side of the sun. So when you launch a rocket ship, it's going to depend where you are in relation to the sun and the moon. You can't go by the light of the moon. And so that's the phases of the moon. And um, it's all thanks to Abby and her Earth hat that, well, we could do that. So Abby, take a bow. Brilliant. Turn, oh. turn and take a bow. Thanks, Amazing. Abby and her Earth hat. Get, take a hat. Give me a high five before you go. Thank you. Sit you back down. So that's pretty simple, right? So yeah. It's... Um, it's about where the moon is in position. In fact, I've got a better idea. I'll talk to you about light. OK. Um, let me see. OK, I'm going to take a little ping pong ball. Yep. And light comes out. It's as emitted as photons, these tiny little particles. So let's say this is a photon of light, and it comes from the sun. Let's say you're the moon. OK. So light's going to leave the sun, yep. get to the moon. It's going to bounce off. That's what we call reflection. It's going to reflect off. And then it might come to my eye on Earth, yep. and I'll be able to see the light from the sun that has bounced off the moon into my eyes. OK. Makes sense? OK, yeah. but it happens a bit faster. Okay. So turn around for me, and I'll show you. So photon emitted from the sun, yes. and then it's going to go to the moon. It's going to bounce what? off the moon, and then it's going to come to my eye. Ow. And that's how it works. That really hurts. How could that ping pong ball hurt so much? It's tiny. Stop being a baby. Okay, one more time. So, it leaves, the photon leaves, leaves the sun. Yep. Heads towards the moon. Now, it's very careful to avoid the craters on the moon. And then, <laughs> bounces off, we call that reflection, into my eyes and I can see. What is going on? Look, I'm I'm going to have to go and check my bruises. I think I've damaged something. Those photons are evil. OK, while he's gone, I've got a great experiment to do with reflection. I'm going to need some help, though. Put your hands up if you can help me understand reflection. OK, I've got some great people. Don't panic. If I'm looking at you, it's because I have lots of ideas for lots of experiments. So let's see. Yes, you flapping your arm at me. You can come. Yep. And... We will have... Oh, you have a lovely lab coat on. Come on up. OK. Come on in. Come on in. Come up to the front for me. What is your name? Freya, Freya and... Emily. Emily, Freya and Emily. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Freya, that is for you. Emily, that is for you. Can you just tell me what you can see inside the bowl? Yourself. That's because there is a mirror inside the bowl. Shine it at the audience. Maybe you'll blind them. Okay, there is a mirror inside that bowl. All right, step over here. Step over here with me. We're going to do a reflection experiment all the way to the side of the stage because we are going to dim the lights. Hold on. We're going to dim the lights and we're going to put a spotlight. Freya, we're going to start with you. Can you hold your hands out like that and catch the light in your arms? Okay. Now, you should see that you are reflecting light in the ceiling. Can you reflect it over towards the audience, but not in their eyes? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. OK. Emily, come over with me. We've got light over here for you. OK, you can see the circle up on the ceiling. Now, you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to put your hand. Oh, she's on it. Oh, look, she's got two feet in. No, don't blind everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to be very careful. We don't. We need people's eyesight. OK, stand here, hands out. 
Right, so sort of blind them, but not close. So we go, wee, 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 wee. Okay, but not, okay. So we're gonna put them up at the ceiling. And then, you've got control of it. What you can see is the light is being reflected by the mirror. So this is reflection, so the light comes down, it bounces off, and we can see the reflection of light there. But we're gonna do my favorite experiment. And that's gonna take us old people back to 1992, school disco, end of the night. We're gonna do what I call the double mirror experiment. So, Emily and Fred, what I'd like you to do is above my head is a mirror ball. Can you move your reflection to right above me? Now I <sighs> had the time of my life. No, I never felt like this before. Oh, yeah. Yes, I swear. Double reflection. It's a truth. Last dance of the night. You all know you were there. Because Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause, the double reflection experiment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to head off over here. Well, that was me. brilliant. I was watching that on the CCTV in the lab. That has given me a brilliant idea. Claire, hit the music. Thank you. What, what on earth was that? It was the best thing ever. You just heard that. Did you pay him? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, 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 hold on. So you, you decided to turn yourself into a human dancing mirror ball with a glittery leotard? Yes, but not without good reason. Oh, I'm sure. I was worried about something going on wrong with the rocket. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I got into space, mm -hmm. I could get out of the rocket and float around in space and you could look up from Earth and see me. Right. But then I thought, how will you know it's me? Oh, There's obviously. lots of other shiny things in space. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I did funky dancing, you would know it was me and send help. Wait, so you're going to jump out of a rocket ship, do funky dancing in space with no space suit on, yeah. and that's your SOS sign. Absolutely. Up there for thinking, down there for dancing. Uh, hey, oh, hey, Boris. Um, yes. Yeah, that was a really awesome cunny cunny you were doing there. Thank you. <laughs> the thing is, I'm a bit worried that people won't be able to see you when it's cloudy, uh, even in your suit. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I've just checked the weather, and there's a huge cyclone coming in from the west. <gasps> oh, don't panic! Don't panic! It's a tornado! It's a tornado! Everybody stay in your seats! You're absolutely fine! In fact, hide under your seats! I'm hiding! Boris. Stay calm! Boris, we can see your bottom. <laughs> Boris, come out, come out, come out. You're going to be fine. So cyclones and tornadoes, they're really different. So they're both circling. Don't pull it out your bum. Here. They're very different. They're both circling masses of air. But okay. cyclones are big circling masses of air. They bring us rain and unsettled weather. Yep. It's fine. All she was saying is that sometimes it brings clouds, so I wouldn't be able to see you sparkly dancing in space. Oh, okay. But tornadoes are totally different. Okay. Um, actually, I'll show you. Grab this box here. This okay. is the weather box. Is it? I thought it was a shower cubicle. So we're going to pull the weather box out to the middle okay. so everybody can see it. There we okay, are. I'm just going to push it forwards and backwards. There we go. Right. So, here we have a weather box. Perfect. Now, for this experiment to work, I need, I need somebody who's going to go inside the weather box. Um, let's see. Now, for this, unfortunately, you can't be wearing a short skirt. You'll see why very, very soon. So, if you're wearing trousers or shorts, 
Keep your hand up. Okay. Can I just can I just look behind you? Oh, you are perfect. Come on up. Come on up. Okay. Here we go. Now, what is your name? Rosie, come and stand in front of here for me, please, and take a bow. And everybody's gonna go, woohoo! <laughs> now, Rosie, I have a question. Did you come with some grown-ups today? Who did you come with? My mom. Your mom. Mom. Is it okay if I put Rosie inside the box and shut the door? Did everybody hear that? Everybody hear that? That was verbal permission, just saying, because I am a stranger putting a child in the box. Come with me, Rosie. Okay. Now, please step inside the box. Stand in the middle for me. Um, I'm going to ask you to do two things. Don't worry, don't worry. There's air holes. I've made sure she can breathe. Um, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Can you pull out your ponytail for me, please? Thank you. Okay. Now, what I need to do is just rub your hair a little bit like this. Thank you. It's the science. Now, is there anything inside the box with you? A big fan. Now, the thing is, we can't really tell if the fan is on or not, because air is invisible. But um, I'm just going to see and check if it's on and see if anything changes. So let's see. Is, is anything changing inside the box? Yeah. Well, it's spinning. OK, well, that's good. We're just going to wait a second. Um, because air is invisible, it's often very hard to see when there's wind and stuff. But um, sometimes, <laughs> you might want to hold your t-shirt down and not hang on to your hair, because your hair, as people can see, has turned into a helicopter. <laughs> now, Rosie, hold on to your T-shirt and see if you can do this with your hair and back up for me. Oh, yeah. OK, so we're going we're gonna to see what happens to her hair in there. Can we see her face? Not really. Good. Um, so you can't really tell if it's windy in the box unless we put a human inside the box who has great hair. And you can see that it's starting to spin. It's going all over her face. It's going to be knotted forever. She's never going to do anything with that hair again. But it's good that she donated it for science. <laughs> now, the thing is, <laughs> we could do this all day, but we're not going to. Rosie, come back out of the box. Now, I called this a weather box, and, and you're not actually weather, so don't worry. We're actually going to make some weather inside this box. Was that fun? Yeah. Yes. Is your hair okay? OK, so we're going to make a cloud. Have you ever made a cloud before? Awesome. Now, making clouds is very, very dangerous. So we're going to give you some safety equipment. Here are some safety spectacles. And we're going to put these very, very, very large gloves on you. Don't worry if your fingers don't go in properly. They're just to stop your hands from freezing off. <laughs> right. Thanks, Mum. OK. Next, we're going to do that. OK, so we're going to use something very, very cold and something very, very hot to make this cloud. The thing that we're going to use that's very, very cold is something called dry ice. So have you seen dry ice before? No? All right, we're going to go into gonna here. More. You carry on. OK, we're going to step into the box. Can you step into the box for me? Awesome, and I'm going to put some gloves on and get into the box with you. Now, dry ice is a, a white powder, and it's very cold, which is why we put our gloves on, so our hands don't freeze off. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the dry ice, which looks like a white powder, and I'm going to have you try and put that dry ice into the bowl for me. Oh, not on yourself, not in your shoe. Your toes will freeze off. OK, let's see. We've got some in there. A little bit more. Perfect. Ah! OK. A little bit more in there. Awesome. So is this bowl now filled with dry ice? Can you see? Right. But it's not very exciting on its own. So we're going to head back out of the box. And we know that clouds are made up of water. So now we need to add some hot water to the box and the dry ice. And it should instantly vaporize and make a cloud. And clouds on their own are pretty, and you can see shapes in them. But well, we want to make a different type of cloud. So we're going to turn the fan back on. And Rosie, I want you to see what you were actually standing in. So stand a little bit closer to me, because this is what you were in. When we turned the fans on, you were actually standing inside a tornado. And when your hair was helicoptering, 
That's because we had made a tornado in a box that you were actually in the middle of. And so, Rosie, I think you are the only person in Wellington who says, I stood inside a tornado, inside a box, in Wellington, and I survived. Give her a round of applause. How cool is that? See, an actual tornado in a box. It's so cool. I love wow. the weather box. That was incredible. See, so you don't need to be afraid when it's in a box. Um, actually, I think Claire wanted some upgrading and she needed some more data. She was talking about testing on, on humans again. And well, there's a bunch of humans in here. So I thought, hey, Claire, do you want to do your test on the humans? I sure do. Check this out. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Did you hear me saying ba with a B and then fa with an F? Who heard me say ba and then fa? Hands up. Yeah? Good. You did too? Oh yeah. Well that's great. But here's the trick. Even though you saw me saying fa with an F, the sound never changed. You always heard ba with a B. Check it out. Have another look. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Ba. Ba, 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 ba. It's called the McGurk effect. It shows how what you humans see affects what you think you hear. <laughs> you humans are buzzy. Yeah, we're pretty buzzy, Claire. Hey, shh, shh. Here's the thing. Look what I found. I thought we could test Boris, because Boris wants to be an astronaut. The thing is, when you're an astronaut, you need to be really calm when there's like situations that you're not expecting. So I, I thought we could hide this alien and, um, and see what he thinks. So um, where do you think I should hide it? Over here or over here? Over here? By, by the rocket? Hold on, Shh. don't tell him it's here. I'm gonna put him by the rocket and see if he notices. I'm just going to finish some work on my rocket, then I'll be done. Okay. Stay back, let it go! Stay back! It's fine, Boris. It's fine. It's a, it's a pretend alien. I do that. <clears throat> Just practicing my moves. Um, I was testing you, see, because astronauts, they need to be really calm when they're facing things that they're not expecting. And I've learned that when you are stressed out, yes. that your immediate response is to karate chop. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I know you, and you've never done karate. No. So uh, where did you learn that move? Fortnite. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I'm a little bit worried that you're not prepared to go to space. And, and being afraid of things is a big deal. So I, I made you a gift. Oh, great. I love gifts. Yes. Now, it's just a gift that makes a loud noise oh. so that if you're ever afraid in space... Brilliant. It can make a loud noise, and you're like, oh, I don't feel afraid anymore. Okay, great. It's very simple. All you do is take a flammable gas, yes. and then fire it through a tube, yes. and then ignite it, and then it will go pop, like this. Ooh, that looks good. Let's have a go. <gasps> Just put some gas, ignite it. Ooh, that is brilliant. It looks fantastic! Look at that! There's... Nana girl? Yeah? There's just one problem. Wait, what's the problem? Uh, it doesn't make the right sound. It, it 
It's called a plasma popper. It goes pop. It makes exactly the right sound. No, 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 no. Because in space, mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. make this sound. Boris. Boom. Boris. Yes. Space is a vacuum. What that means is that there are not enough molecules or particles to actually vibrate to transfer sound waves, meaning space is totally silent. There's no sound in space. That's exactly what it's like up there. That's rubbish. Well, and yes. incorrect. Why? Well, I have been watching a documentary about space, mm -hmm. and there is definitely noises and baboos in there. What's the documentary? It's a documentary series called Star Wars. <laughs> and they have it all very realistic, and it's very noisy. <sighs> okay, I feel like I'm not going to win this one, so I'll, I'll humor you. Okay. I will teach you how to make a Star Wars noise. Okay. If you find somebody to help you who is amazing at making sounds that are on Star Wars and in space. Okay. So make the sound. He will find you. He might go upstairs. He's going to go maybe upstairs. So if you're upstairs, look make behind you. Make some noises. Because Boris is going to be coming. And while he does that, I'm going to get the experiment table ready. So put your hand up. Stop making your noise. Let's hear you. Let's hear your baboos. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's up. He's up in wow. the middle. He's up in the middle. Make your sounds. Let's come, there's someone over here. Let's go down the center. We'll find someone making all the steps. Oh, no. Baboos! This time some baboos. Baboos Keep there. going, he hasn't found anybody yet. You there. Yes. Did you find someone? I've got a baboo, we're coming down now. Okay, bring them ready? down. Bring them down. It's a long okay, way to go, okay. You. While he's doing that, I'm going to bring over some cool Thank technical you. equipment oh. for this experiment. We're miles away. Mind okay. the steps nice and slowly. So here we, we need go. down here. One, two. Some tongs. Oh. Oh. All right. Who did you find, oh. Boris? Step there as well. We're coming down. Thank you. You're all right. What's your name? Kalani. Wow. Okay, here we go, up the steps here. Did you find someone? Yes, I thought we got locked out, but we didn't. It's Kalani. Kalani? Yes. Okay, I'm just turning that on. Now, Kalani, step forwards in front of here for us, please, because we want to see, see you. Now, did you make some cool space sounds? Do you think you can show Boris what your space sounds are like? <laughs> wow, it's like a space dog. Can you do it again? <laughs> I, I want, want a gun that makes that, that noise. noise. Let's go one more time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Now, that's very good. Now, I have a question for you. I have a piece of equipment here. Have you ever seen one of these before? Yeah. Do you know what it's called? A spring, you are right, because you are a child. And you think it's called a spring. If you were an old person, you would think this was called a slinky. Now... It's a funny name, I know you're laughing. That, I know. <laughs> but old people in the olden days, they used to have these slinkies, and do you know what they did with them? No, because you're young. They threw them down the stairs, and they just watched them. And then when they got to the bottom of the stairs, do you know what they did? No, they picked it up, and they went back to the top of the stairs, and they'd throw it down again. And that was it. For days, they would do that. Well, this, you see, this thing was invented before the internet. <laughs> and so that's all we did for fun. But this slinky actually has a very important, important thing that we're going to learn about. And that's about how sound is made through vibration. And so the sound of a slinky is very, old people will know the sound of a slinky. Nothing sounds like a slinky. It's made out of metal. New ones are made out of plastic. They're not the same. This is an authentic old people's one from the antique shop. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to hang this slinky up here. And I'm going to give you some metal tongs. And what I'd like you to do is stand sideways so everybody can see you. And what I'd like you to do is to take the metal tongs and I want you to tap the bottom of this. And I'm going to take a microphone and see if we can hear the sound. Not very spacey, is it? 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to amplify that sound, because sound is just a vibration. So we've just got a tiny balloon here, a balloon that we've put very little air in, and we're going to put that into our slinky, and hopefully that's going to help transfer the vibration of the metal atoms as they vibrate to make the sound a little bit louder. OK, see if you can tap the bottom again. Does that sound like something you might know? All right, hold on, let's just stop it a second and just give it one tap. And another one. Whoa. Now I know what you're thinking. I don't have a balloon at home, but I definitely have a normal person slinky, so. Of course, that's the thing you have more than anything else. If, well, there's a bunch of old people in here, so it's easy. <laughs> now, if you don't have a balloon, what you can do is just take a plastic cup because this is also flexible and this will also help transfer the vibration and amplify the sound, especially because of the, the shape of the cup. It's going to come out of the top. So all you need is a slinky and a cup. And if you tap the bottom for me. And that is actually, seriously, how they made the lightsaber sound in the original Star Wars movies. And so all you needed was a cup and a slinky and a very young person who calls it a spring. And there you go. Give me a high five. That is how you make the sound of Star Wars. Wow. Thank you. Come on, then. Let's go, let's, let's go back. Oh. Super easy. So you can totally do that at home if you have a slinky. Easy peasy to do. And, um, well, kind of fun. And kind of exciting. Now, as, as they head back, um, I had a question for Boris, and I wasn't really sure how he was going to launch his catapult, his catapult, launch his, um, his rocket. Now, I saw he had made a catapult out back, and I think that's what he's going to use. So, did I see a catapult that you had made? Pardon? A catapult. Yes! And yes! So, is, that, is that how you're going to launch into space? This is what is known in the trade as a prototype. Oh, cool. So, so this is what you've built to launch your rocket into space. Well, this is what I thought. It was my first attempt at working out how I might get to space. So I made a prototype to scale. It's about one, two, and a bit to me. Uh, baby Boris here will try and show you how well it works. Oh, wait, um, wait, wait. Stand back. It might hit you in the face. How far is it going to go? Uh, a long way. Well, okay. so I'm going to get some rope. It's going to come off. It's going to go into the sea. Some whales and narwhals will pull on the rope to pull me back. And then when I say release, they'll release me and I will fly into space like this. Ah. And there you see the problem. It started very well. It was going great till about here. And then gravity kicked in. And then I landed on my head. So, not to be put off, I went back to the drawing board, did some more calculations. And I worked out that in order to me to get into space, I needed to make my catapult the size of New Zealand. Boris. Which, yes? Boris, that, that's quite big. Where are you going to put it? Well, I'm going to put it on the North and the South Island, and the bit in the middle could serve as a bridge to link them up. So that will be good. And yeah, and so that will be great. And we'll just build it, and uh, everyone will be happy. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so you're going to build a catapult the size of New Zealand. North Island and South Island. And put it on New Zealand. On New Zealand. Uh, where will all the New Zealanders live? Inside the catapult. I've thought about it. They could live inside the catapult and it would solve the housing crisis. I just, I don't think everybody wants to live in a catapult. Here, so you pull it back and, and, and it goes, I think, I think it's not got enough thrust. No, that's, the, that's why I have to build it the size of New Zealand. Well, I think... No, that's not going to work at all. So you need more thrust in it. So you need to be able to propel it to give you more energy. Yes. Um, let me see. I've got a, I've got a better idea. OK. Um, here, I'll show you with a fire extinguisher. And okay. grab my backpack. So if you have a fire extinguisher, this is filled with gas, compressed gas. In this case, it's carbon dioxide. And the thing is, if I try and get the gas to come out of this fire extinguisher, extinguisher by pressing on the nozzle, all the gas is going to squeeze out like that and go really, really fast. Yes. Well, this is a great way to show Newton's third law of motion. So that says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay. So 
If I squeeze on the nozzle, if the gas comes out this way, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction this way. I mean, that's how rockets launch. So they, they usually have a gas that goes downwards, and that forces the rocket to go upwards. Okay. Equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. So Brilliant. I can show you something. Um, the thing is, rockets are built really pointy, and that reduces the drag. So there's very little drag or, or low friction, so it's really aerodynamic. Now, the thing is, um, if I want to be reducing my drag, I need to, um, I need to find something. Oh, I know, here. If I switch my shoes out, which are very grippy on the ground for a skateboard, then I can reduce my friction, and, um, and maybe I've got an idea. Okay. Why don't I put this on? Yes. So I'm going to wear the fire extinguisher. Um, and, well, it's basically like a jetpack, you see, like this. Um, and then I'm going to put some safety spectacles on, and I'm going to put some ear defenders on and some gloves. Now, if it works and I have enough thrust, then if I stand on the skateboard, it might be able to push me in an equal and opposite direction to where the gas is going. Um, why don't you undo the safety clip okay. for me? Safety pin out. You are dangerous. OK. Um, I'm not sure this is a good idea, but I'm going to try it anyway. Right, so skateboard, fire extinguisher, backpack, ear defenders. Um, do you think this is going to work? Should we try it? OK, hopefully this is thrust and Newton's uh, third law. But well, we'll see what happens. Count me down. Three, two, one. Well, that was brilliant. I know, so much fun. But the problem is, it's a tiny fire extinguisher and it's not going to get you to space. No. It's just kind of fun. So you're going to need to take the same principle using thrust, but with a more explosive gas. Oh, 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 oh. Why don't I use the um, hydrogen like uh, Claire suggested earlier? But you blew it up. I know, but that's because it's in a balloon. If I put something into a rocket, something like a plastic bottle that could hold it and has a nozzle, oh. I could direct the thrust. OK, at the back of the lab, there's a recycle container. There should be some empty bottles in there. OK. Grab the hydrogen, fill them up, and then, um, well, let's just see what happens when they're filled with hydrogen. Now, I know when you did it with a the balloon, they did explode. But maybe with a nozzle, we can, we can funnel some of that. So um, let's see what happens. We're going to, we've got some hydrogen in these bottles. Um, we're going to light them. And we're just going to see what happens. Now, you know what happened last time, so just be warned. OK, we'll try one. Are you ready? OK, ready. Three, two, one. Whoa! Ready, here we go. Let's see if this one works. Okay. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Whoa! And one over there. Three, two, one. Woohoo! Yeah! Well okay. caught! So that that's, that's brilliant. a prototype. Now that's a tiny rocket, but if you make that bigger and put more hydrogen in, the thing is, that reaction required hydrogen to react with oxygen and the yes. combustion reaction. Um, so you're going to need to make some oxygen. How do I do that? You don't know? No. You don't know how to make oxygen? No. If I said the words elephant toothpaste, would you know what I meant? Not really, but it sounds fun. Oh. Do you know what I mean by elephant's toothpaste? Here, I'll show you how to do it. Okay. So it's very, very messy. We're going to need to protect the floor. OK. And basically, elephant's toothpaste is how you can make lots and lots of oxygen so you can react it with the hydrogen and, and you can create thrust for your rocket. Now, I'll bring over a lab bench. Um, if you can get a tablecloth for it. I've got a tablecloth ready and raring to go. OK, oh, you protect that. And I'll get some chemicals. There we go. It's good. Lovely. Okay. Okay, we need some safety gear. And then, um, now inside here, we have a chemical. It's called hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide has the chemical formula H2O2. So it has a lot of oxygen in it. If you think of water as H2O, then H2O2 has more oxygen than water. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hydrogen peroxide 
which is inside these large bottles here. And we're going to force them to make more oxygen than they would do normally. So they're making a small amount of oxygen right now, but it's not very much. So we're going to force them to get all of the oxygen out by using something called a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is a chemical that scientists use, and it's a chemical that makes things happen faster. So in this case, it's just a see-through, it looks like water, a transparent chemical. But what it's going to do is it's going to force the oxygen to come out of the hydrogen peroxide. The thing is, oxygen is invisible. And so this could be a really boring experiment because I'm like, ta-da, oxygen. You're like, I can't see it. So to make sure you can see it, we're going to trap the oxygen in some bubbles. So we're going to put some dishwashing liquid into our hydrogen peroxide. And that way, hopefully, if we make any oxygen, you'll be able to see it as bubbles. OK, so we're going to mix those up. Hydrogen peroxide, catalyst, dishwashing liquid. Now, here's the thing. If we make any oxygen and you see it, I'm going to need you to go like this. Woo! OK, so just practice that for me. Three, two, one. Woo! OK, bear with me. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you all protected? Do you have everything you need? Just, just for safety. I'm all good. OK, we're prepared. Are you ready? This is Elephant's Toothpaste, how we make oxygen from hydrogen peroxide. Count us down. Three, two, one. As you can see, we are making oxygen. It is still being made. You can see the bubbles are still coming out. Now, you may see that there is steam here. That's because it's very hot here right now. This is what we call an exothermic reaction. Exothermic reactions give out heat, and so it's very hot. And the little bit of water that's left in the bottle is actually going off as hot steam. And so, well, you can watch this. It's going to make lots and lots of oxygen for you. And well, this is how we think elephant's toothpaste and all the other science principles that, that we teach should actually be taught around New Zealand. Now, you've been part of the Nano Girl Show, and we have been living on the road on a bus for the last five weeks. Wellington is our last destination, so we get to go home tomorrow. We're so excited. But in that time, we have taught over 50,000 students over five weeks all around New Zealand. We've done it both in English and today on Māori with our bilingual show, Mata Toa, and we could only have done that thanks to proceeds from your tickets tonight. So thank you so much for supporting us by buying a ticket. You have been involved in us training teachers around the country and bringing science to places that don't normally have access to science like this. We cannot do this without our partners. I just want to say a huge thank you to Meridian Energy, to the McDiamond Institute, to the University of Auckland's Faculty of Engineering, and to Engineering New Zealand, who have sponsored us throughout this tour so that we can do all of this science. Now, we cannot do this alone. There's an amazing Nano Girl team. They all have the t-shirts on. Give them a ray when you see them. But this is my friend, Gareth Bassett, and he plays Boris. You would have seen on the screen behind me, Claire. Claire is played by the amazing Kuda Forrester. My name is Dr. Michelle Dick Dickinson. I believe that science is for all. I play Nano Girl. Thank you so much for supporting us. We cannot do this without your support. You had, you had one more thing to say, Boris. Uh, yes, uh, that's all very nice, but the, the lab is still in a mess and we need to tidy it up. Tidy it up? Yes. Well, like, I only tidy up with science, so do you want to do one more science experiment? Yeah. One more? Yeah. Okay, go grab the equipment. Hold on, we'll be back. Okay. Amazing.
talking about um, what actually happens under the winter play. If you put a balloon inside of a stinky, it change it completely changes the noise. They made it very kid friendly and um, they showed some really cool science. So it's quite important for kids to actually see the fun side from a young age. Bring the kids to something fun and enjoyable and be able to introduce them to more science. I think it's really important to encourage girls to do science as well as boys. Yeah, and she loves science. I'd like to do some more science in the future. Because the whole thing about science is that you make a mess doing it because it's for the fun of doing it. Science is very important for all aspects of life. I think if they like learning, if, they're, if it's fun, then they want to learn and they're going to. Yes, 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 yes!